If the player has previously told Piper or Nick Valentine to wait at a settlement, they will instead be at Valentine Detective Agency or Public Occurrences, waiting for the player as part of ending the previous quest and beginning this one. Under normal circumstances, emergent behavior cannot be advanced until after this quest is completed. However, if the player character used console commands to advance through it before completing this quest, the game will use unused audio files, causing Dr. Amari to say, Wait. I remember you. I helped you with the robot to synth transplant for Curie. When the player interacts with a character or object, the scene will freeze and Kellogg will start a monologue about them. The player can activate them again to get him to stop and resume the scene. During the scene with Kellogg and the Institute scientist, the three synths will look in the direction of the sole survivor and continue to follow them as they move around the room. Sometimes, if the Memory Den quest has been completed before this one, Kellogg and the two Institute scientists will still be labeled as mysterious figures, as seen in the prologue of Fallout 4. Aside from the final scene, viewing the memories is not required and may be skipped by running to the next section of the neural pathway. After the final memory plays, one must use the television screen to exit, which does not enable until Amari finishes her monologue. During the memory of Kellogg kidnapping Sean, Dr. Amari will apologize for putting the player through that horror again. This occurs whether or not the quest The Memory Den is complete. If the quest was completed, she will preface entering the memory with an, oh god no, not again. I'll try to find another memory quickly, just try to endure it. When X6-88 to and Sean teleport during the memory, the player may be damaged by the teleporter's radius, if standing close enough. In the last scene, Sean is sitting near two Massachusetts surgical journals and one Tesla science magazine. The magazine Sean can be seen reading is called Geckos and Gamma Radiation The Key to Prolonged Life? Companions that are accompanying the player upon exiting the memory lounger will have unique comments if the player asks them their thoughts. When exiting the memory lounger and heading upstairs, there is a character that appears to be Deacon inside one of the loungers. The sole survivor cannot interact with him. If Deacon has been met previously, he will not be present. There is a cut memory between the Vault 111 memory and the final memory. This depicted a scientist installing implants into Kellogg. There were two narrations of this missing memory. Kellogg. Turned out I was the only one to ever get these installed. At least that's the story I heard. Some kind of complications is all they would say. I suppose they didn't much care if something scrambled my brains. And anyway, by that point I wouldn't have let them take the implants out. I'd come to rely on them too much. Which, looking back, is probably one of the reasons they agreed to it in the first place. Give them some leverage over me. Scientist. This was my reward for the vault job. I'd started getting implants a few years back but only minor stuff. This was the full deal, the cutting-edge tech they didn't usually let out of the lab. I volunteered for everything. I figured I didn't have anything to lose. Besides, this was kind of their thing. Like killing people was my thing. Why not see what they could do for me? Nick Valentine will automatically exit power armor when he is going to use Kellogg's implant. During the scene with three synths, the weapons can be looted after Kellogg kills them. Doing so will make the player become visible, 